saying that uh, he tried it out, he got 11 outputs, okay. not 17, yeah, but show you yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, take us through how you get 17 outputs. <laughs> right, so there are some of them which are hidden, right, so probably I'll show you. Focus upon Adobe RoboHelp and Adobe RoboHelp server, right, and my, if I talk about <coughs> my role within Adobe, it's more likely focuses upon showcasing the solutions how you can leverage them within your organization and how you can implement them. Now, if I talk about this agenda for the session today, is there are few enhancements that we are done, that we have done on both the sides of the product. You have gone through the session of FrameMaker, right? So you're gonna hear some of the terms that are same in RoboHelp as well. They do share some of the functionalities under the hood, right? And talking about the publishing, uh, the conditional, uh, con uh, conditionalizing your content. So these are some of the things that you could also achieve from Adobe RoboHelp as well. Right now, before I jump into the solution, right, so these are the three pillars that on which the whole session would be focusing upon. So first one is the ease of use. The people who are uh, the first timers who are planning to get started in order to build a technical documentation which could be delivered through various channels. It could be something that is offline. It could be in the form of Word documents, PDFs, or something that could be consumed online on different devices, which could be which could something that could range from the desktops, tablets, or the mobile phones. Slowly and steadily, the industry is merging. I would say it's transitioning towards that phase. Right now, you might not have that requirement, but you know, down the line, it would also ensure that if you encounter such situations, you could tackle them as well. The other thing that I would be talking about is how you get to personalize your content, right? There would be situations wherein, you know, you have multiple documentations, maybe for different clients, for different set of products, for different departments, right? So you can have all that different documentation residing under one roof and you could cater it to different kinds of audience that you have. Every kind of output that could be consumed on every device that exists on this planet Earth as of now. So all in all, there are like 17 outputs, which I would be talking about, and how you get to publish it. That could range from, again, the large screens to the smaller screens. Now, as far as, you know, before I jump into the product, right, so this, there is a quick question. How many of you have used RoboHelp before? Okay. So have you tried, I would say, the latest version? How many of you have tried the latest version? 2015. 2015. Right, so most of you do have the gist, the kind of enhancements that we have come up with, right? However, you know, there are a few more things that you could do way beyond you know, in RoboHelp 2015, as far as your content is concerned. So right now, it could be in the form of textual visual representation, which could be the images and the videos, right? Now, there are different kinds of documentation that we deal with nowadays. These documentations could be focusing upon, I would say, the policies and procedures, knowledge bases. It could be something related to the products, right? So it gets to enable you to build all those different kinds of documentation, right? And what kind of enhancement are there as far as productivity is concerned? That is what I would be talking about. So first of all, with the newest version, the major and the drastic change that we have done based on the feedback that we have received from most of the customers across the globe is that it was a cumbersome job to work with Adobe RoboHelp or with the prior versions of RoboHelp, right? So. I believe most of uh, the people in this room must have used the latest version of Word. It's kind of like a mandate tool that comes in, uh, that is there implemented within every organization. So what we have tried to do is, we have tried to follow the same strategy in RoboHelp as well, which would enable you to be much more product, uh, productive 
right? So you have the ribbon-based UI in the new RoboHelp 2015. So that every task that you need to perform has been logically grouped under the tabs that you see on the top, right? So you have the project tab, anything, whenever you're planning to get started with the product, right? So this is the tab that you can leverage. If you need to modify something, you have edit and insert. And if you have done it, if you have built the content, then you have the review tab wherein you could send out the files to review. Then you have collaboration. And lastly, you have the artwork. Now, the benefit of, I would say, using the ribbon base or RoboHelp 2015 is you no longer have to remember where that particular option is. You could just simply go to that respective tab. All the options are provided to you on the front itself. And again, the user interface is highly customizable. Like FrameMaker, you could set up your workspaces. And you know you could, once the uh, user interface would like to do, which would be in terms of you know the UI, how the layout would look like, and once you have defined it, you could select the respective format and you could publish it. So but certainly will, yes. But will this be providing the hosting service also? So for hosting service, we have another solution. That's called Adobe RoboHelp Server. So most of you must have heard it, heard about it. So anything that you design from RoboHelp or uh, and from FrameMaker, you could host it onto RoboHelp Server. But but that, is that? Free with this RoboHelp or is it so that's a separate, separate solution. solution. So instead of going ahead with massive hosting solutions or you know paying to some external third-party providers who host your content like web services, something like GoDaddy, right? So instead of using them, you can use RoboHelp server, which would enable you to host your content even within your organization. And also, if you have people who are outside the organization, they could also access that content. Yeah, so both internal and external stakeholders. Exactly. Can you can do that. But so, uh, mm -hmm. is that conditionalized, or do you need to make some special settings for that? Well, so know? if I if I talk about conditionalizing the content, that is something that you define within RoboHelp. So yes, that can be conditionalized based on the target audience that you have, and you could serve it to your audience accordingly. Then this is the part where the conditionalizing comes into play. So far. We were leveraging conditional build tags in order to serve to our audience, right? However, you know, there were few things, there were few challenges that the authors were facing while distributing the content. You know, they wanted to give users the more power to self-select the information on their own, right? Instead of generating multiple subsets, making them store at some, making them at, uh, go at some specific location wherein the people used to make the call what information or what document they should access in order to you know, get a grab of that information. Now, what you can do is, by using the conditional build tags, on the top of it, you could use something called dynamic content filters. Majorly being used in the e-commerce websites, so if you go through the list of products, Let's say, for an example, if you want to buy something from Jabong or from Amazon, right? You pick your favorite brand. You get the list of products that are that you are more likely keen towards or that you would like to buy, which makes it much more easier for you to find the products or the information that you are most likely willing to consume. In a similar way, you can have this strategy implemented within your help documentation as well. And not just any help, it could be the knowledge base, it could be, I would say, it could be procedures and policies, it could be the product manuals, it could be anything. Now, if I talk about the dynamic content filters, there are different types of categories that you can define. So there is no limitation, right? There would be different clients, there would be different products, there would be different departments, right? So you have the full authority to define your own categories, right? And based on that, you give them the option, what information that they want to see <coughs> as a user. So with this, they get to pick and choose, and they get to see that information. Now the benefit of this is, it not only, right? So these are the different set of outputs that are available that you get to generate from RoboHelp that would enable you to deliver your content to almost any possible device. It could be some old machines, it could be the new computers, and like I said, so HTML5 is something that is trending. People would like to ensure that you know every user has a similar experience, irrespective of what, whatsoever the device they are using. 
So HTML5 gives you the flexibility to, you know, the output, what you generate from RoboHub itself scales to that respective dimension of that device so that the users, they get to consume uh, that particular piece of information and they don't face any readability issues. So there are different kinds of options that are also available in publishing. Now most of these flat, uh, options are also available in FrameMaker as well. So we have shared, we have used some similar layouts in FrameMaker as well. So if you have some data documentation and if you would like to publish it to HTML5 or any other formats, you could do that as well. So to get all the 17 types of output, to get all the 17 types of output, either standalone uh, RoboHelp will do or we need to get the TCS, ATCS. Well, I would say standalone RoboHelp would do. Do it? Yeah. Because I don't see all this. Uh, so earlier it used to happen with FrameMaker, right, wherein people would have to, so with FrameMaker 10 and below, right, people had to have RoboHelp along with it so that they could publish something that could be consumed over the web. But like I said, it's the only solution that is there in the technical communication suite which is powerful enough to let you reuse any type of content and publish it to any possible device or any possible format that you wish to do right now. So this, these are, I would say, some of the major enhancements that we have done and uh, that's where mostly we are leading this product to so that it helps you accomplish the goals that you have in your organization and yet to do and yet you do your authoring in an easy way now. Now so if I talk about all in all this solution it lets you author your content it lets you collaborate so if you are planning to have multiple authors work uh, you know on the same project you could use some, uh, I would say, free services like uh, SVN, right? Uh, and you could integrate the product with it so that multiple people could actually work on the same project and they could develop more. <coughs> then you have review option as well. Once you are done with your documentation, you would definitely be keen to share your documentation with the different stakeholders so that they could give you the comments and based on those comments, you could have the changes done. And lastly, the publish. So I would say it's one solution that fulfills all your authoring needs, right? It gets to enable you with enough power that would make your project successful. So I'll try and I'll try and do my best to you know show you the demonstration of the product because uh, really I don't have any table on the podium, right? Yeah, I get the timer. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hey, one question. Yes. Uh, how is it different from Matcap Fair? Because Matcap Fair also does the same thing what you're showing, author, collaborate, review, and publish. Right. And it does also provide different outputs that you want. In. I agree to you. Yeah. Right, and both the products, they do have edge-to-edge -edge comparisons, yes. right? But why RoboHelp, why not Matcap? And that's the question that even, you know, because I do live demonstrations, it's my part of the job, right? And this is the question that I do get to. Now, you see, within an organization, you know, there are different sets of people. There are people with different skill sets, right? Some people would be technically savvy who could handle with the XML part of the documentation. Some people would be actually planning to get started with the documentation. Now, the way the MATCAP has been designed is it lets you do all those things under one roof. But then, I hope you all do agree, the more the features, the more the complexity, the more is the learning curve, right? So if you have to get started, you have to be instant, you have to be rapid. And that's the way we have designed our products, right? Uh, there was a suggestion that, you know, let's have one solution and ship it out to your audience, you know? But given the fact that there are different skill sets that are there in one organization, Let's just keep it and focus on that particular group, right? We do give you the flexibility, the people who are working, who are doing XML authoring, the people who are doing HTML authoring, in the end, they could also fuse the content together, right? So this way, I would say, why not? And why RoboHelp? It's because major usage is the ease of use and the less learning curve that you would have, right? Especially with the ribbon-based UI that you have. So this is not XML-based? 
good. I like it. But I see the still framing of 2015 is still like a menus and commands. Right. Why so would you like us to change it? Absolutely. <laughs> right. So the good news for you is that we are working on it. Right. And we have our product manager at the end. Yeah, I know him. Abhishek Jai. Right. So he's the one who listens to all the suggestions and okay. incorporates the changes. So most likely you would be able to see the changes in the UI of the upcoming releases. Okay. And that is, like I said, again, a feedback shared by most of the people. So yeah, we do listen to your feedbacks. Feel free to, you know, when you are using our applications, that is what we are more keen towards. We would like our solution to more focus on your requirements instead of just, you know, selling it out and shipping it out and, you know, it's not a viable option, right? So we both on the same branch. One is looking like a ribbon, another is looking like a Exactly. Right, so the UI is certainly be, uh, something that we are working <coughs> on, yes. right? And you could do an, several things. And in FrameMaker 15, we are coming up with something like that. Now, given the fact that I have a very less amount of time, so I just wanted to give you a flavor of how the end result. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sincere apologies. Guys, can I have two minutes of yours? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, just wanted to show you the glimpse of how the final output looks like from RoboHelp. Right, so that you can get an idea, the kind of things that you could achieve and the things that you could do. So I had all the samples maximize it. Yes, you can use or leverage filters that would help you out in order to filter out the information. The moment you select it. The information gets filtered out and it's not just only for the content that resides within the topic. If you have some content that is specific to some geos, it also filters out your table of contents as well. So it only shows you the list of documents that you are more focused and more lean towards. And also, if I talk about the search or any questions, yes? Any plans of uh, this dynamic filter for different outputs, other outputs? So like I said, so the whole industry is uh, transitioning towards the responsive side, right? CHM, I completely agree, but it's more like something that is towards a specific, uh, specific set of industries which are more restricted, which are more controlled like banks, government organizations, right? So I, I guess we can look up to it, we can see, but eyes off. Excellent. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. For a particular cell, can I do that? Yes, you can. So you can do it for tables, you can do it for images, videos, any type of content that resides in your documentation. Uh, even a cell within a table to that level? Yes, you can. That are there within your organization, right? So this is something that would help you out as well. So along with the textual information, we have personally seen that, you know, supplementation, right? So this is something that enables them to have not only the control just on the authoring side, but also on the delivering side as well, to make it available to the audience. You don't have to engage with your IT people anymore in order to serve your content to your audience. Now, if I talk about the different kinds of internet, well, this product, yes, yes, yes. it fills the energy in me. Just a minute, please. Yeah. 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 Yeah.